topic, ballistics. I have not forgot about you. This is Nothing Fancy Shot Show 2010. Let's go check out Arsenal. What do you say? What's going on with one of the highest quality AK importers in the world, at least in the US? Got some good people waiting to give us a tour here. And we are gonna start it off with this uh, young man over here. This is uh, Walker. What's going on, dude? Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for hosting us. We sure appreciate it. The Nothing Fancy Project in the Arsenal house. What's going on with Arsenal, dude? Well, we'd like to show you one of our staples of the line. This is the SGL 2161. It's, it's chambered in 762 by 39. It comes in from Russia. And as you look at it, one of the great things about it is there's the markings are all clean. It's got the uh, factory marking from Ishmash. Of course, it's got the Legion name, which is the custom shop of Ishmash. And then Arsenal, we're the importer. We import these rifles in a sporting configuration and then we remanufacture them to what you see here. Everything on here is done mill spec. When you look at the butt stock, pistol grip, we've got a three piece trigger grip in here that has a combat two stage trigger in it. Upper and lower handguard. The handguard comes with a stainless steel heat shield that's 50% more effective at dissipating heat. And this rifle even comes with one of our own US made muzzle brakes that we make at our factory. It's done in the traditional AK-74 style muzzle brake, and it is effective at doing just that, breaking the recoil of the firearm. 922 R compliant? Yes, sir. Okay. Those parts that I mentioned are all US made, and they're Arsenal products made to the original factory specs. Uh, I did a series of videos called AR-15 versus AK-47, uh, something along those lines, uh, comparing the two types. I used an Arsenal gun by way of reference, and it's an extremely high quality piece. Well, we appreciate that. Um, we recently had a review done on the SGL series. Out of the box, it was shooting about two inch groups at 100 yards. Really destroys the myths of AKs that people have associated that they're just durable weapons that don't shoot accurately. Ours are obviously very accurate weapons. Right on. And below that, a uh, uh, different gun. Looks well, like brown furniture for sure. Well, it looks like brown furniture, but what it is is it's the original Russian plum color. And that's, love that color. that's uh, one that of the more desirable awesome. ones because it's an original Russian color. Again, those are U.S. made, and we had the stocks done in plum color. That is a good looking, and the Warsaw packed buttstock length, no doubt. I believe this short one is. length of pull, in other words, is what all these AKs yeah. have, and that's a no. that's a criticism. Oh, that one looks a little bit longer, though. This is it? one of our NATO link stocks. It's an oh, inch and a dude. quarter longer. Nice. We carry we we nice. manufacture both links. This is the Warsaw. Okay. This is the NATO link. Man, I'm glad well, that was brought up. Um, yeah, I think that would really solve for a lot of U.S. shooters, especially me. I'm six three. The exactly. comfort issues without having to go to an aftermarket setup on my AK variant. And that's exactly why we did it. And if you notice, even on the buttstock, we don't lose any attention to detail. A lot of the U.S. manufacturers forget to put in the trap door for the cleaning kit. We do that with ours. Which is Everything is there. Same guns though, basically, right? Just it's difference in the furniture? Exactly. It is the exact same rifle, same caliber, difference in furniture. And there you have an OD variant too, Walker, right? Yes. Very nice. Uh, talk to us about the site, the graduations, uh, adherence to Russian site. Anything you want to say about that? These are all mil-spec standard. 
course, the sights are sighted in for meters as opposed to yards. Right. Um, when you get the weapon, you can use it and sight it in for yards because most ranges are at yards. Um, but uh, everything is done to the mill spec standard on here. When you look at the front sight tip, we even have the bayonet lug and the accessory lug back here. Outstanding. Uh, one of the things I said in my series is I'm always surprised, and I know this is a very Russian thing, thin barrel with this type of caliber, 7.6239. Do you have any thoughts on, excuse me, on why the Russians uh, do it that way? And does it have any disadvantage in this type of rifle that you've seen? In this particular rifle, it doesn't. I've personally visited the factory at Ishmash. One of the things that's unique about their steel is it, I have, I've seen it myself, they've actually got steel where they've literally tied a knot in it and it doesn't break whatsoever. So their steel is a, it's a little bit different, they've worked on it for many years. The factory at Ishmash has been around for over 200 years making guns. So it's fair to say they kind of know what they're doing. They absolutely do. And of course the barrels are hammer forged and drum lined. Okay. And uh, I know a friend of mine, uh, sadly missing, he's got one. He shot the crap out of it. Lots of rounds through it. And he doesn't have anything bad to say, even under heavy fire, wandering aim, and stuff like that. So it's just my own personal pet peeve. What's this over here, dude? Behind, right here, this is the SGL 31. It's very similar to the 21. The basic difference is, is that instead of 7.62, this is the Russian 545 by 39 caliber. Okay. Um, very similar to the 223 in ballistics. Yes, a lot of people do like the 545 better. It was dubbed the Devil's Round in uh, in the conflict in Afghanistan where the Russians were fighting the Afghanis. Right. They, they called it the Devil Round. The round was developed around 1974, thus that's why it's called an AK-74. And this is true with the AK-74 style. Um, muzzle brake, the gas system, everything on here is exactly like the AK-74. It's got the same features that your other standard AK does. It's got the chrome line barrels, and then the products that we put on it, they have all the same features. It's got the stainless steel heat shield in it. This one right here, we put a Picatinny rail on it. That's the only variation from mil spec technology we've really done. And this one attaches directly to the barrels made by Midwest Industries in the United States. So that is a U.S. compliant part also. Yes, uh, and I think that would add a lot of functionality. Do you notice any heat transfer coming from here to uh, the rail to the optic, since it is kind of in direct contact with that barrel? There is no noticeable heat transfer. This is an aluminum rail. I've taken one and put it on my own personal rifle, went out and shot it, and you can't really notice the heat transfer at all. The barrel's gonna heat up naturally, but you're still able to hold on to the handguard. If like someone it. did have it, they do make rail rail covers for it, so and it adds really hardly any weight to it. That's what I'm hefting it. I'm, I'm surprised. I can't really tell that it's any heavier than a regular SGL 31 or AK-74 variant, if I'm speaking right. Wicked. Uh, and how much are these guns? Uh, let's talk a little bit about cost. We'll go back to this panel right here on the 7.6239. The base model is going to run around 6.99 retail. Uh, if you get different variations in stock color, it could add 10 or 20 dollars to the weapon. When you go to the 545 caliber, there's more technology involved with that, and so those are probably going to be more around the 730 to 750 price range. Okay, still pretty reasonable for what you're getting. Absolutely, we do our products very differently. Most of the AKs that you see coming in the United States are put together from used parts kits and then they sell them as a new product. We don't do that. We put together an entirely brand new gun, comes with a new gun warranty, full factory warranty of one year. Outstanding, wait, do you know that offhand what these guns are weighing? That's... I'd have to look at my spec sheet. I believe it's around seven pounds. Okay, that's decent. Of course, that's without optics. Uh, you're an AK enthusiast, yes? Yes, I am. Do you run irons or optics on it? Generally, I run irons. It just comes from hunting in West Texas. My grandfather didn't like deer stands, so you'd have to go out and rock the canyons, and if you get an optic on it, it's pretty hard to find a deer in the scope. Right on. I usually run iron sights. Uh, I would think most AK guys do, don't they? They do, but we do make a scope mount for it. It mounts on the rail. The proper way to mount a scope on an AK is you have this rail. The rail is sighted to the barrel. 
so that when you put your optic on, it's going to sit on top. It's going to be on a solid platform. Our scope mount has a Picatinny rail on it. We've tried it out with some different products from Aimpoint and other manufacturers, and it works great. Oh, awesome. And it's always going to be high enough so you can still use your irons. That's kind of an AK thing, right? Um, yes, are do you some guys? Of them are, uh, some of them are. Really? Yeah, okay. You, you'd have to get the one we make will cover up your iron sights. Personally, uh, Walker, I prefer that because if I'm going optics, I would like it to get low, so I got that you know fat face on the cheek with a uh, good cheek exactly. weld, which is consistent and uh, you know lends better accuracy. Cool. All right, I got some guys uh, asking me. Some of my good friends are like, "Hey, ask Arsenal if they have a milled receiver gun." You got yes. anything like that? We let's go check it out. Guy. Hey, by the way, on the way, let's say hi to this nice girl. Hello. Hey, man. You're nothing fancy. <laughs> That's right, I am. I can't believe it. What a privilege. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's uh, she's one of their reps. Thanks for hosting us. We sure My appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. My pleasure. You said something off camera. Uh, who watches Nothing Fancy? My fiance. <laughs> 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 and me. And uh, all kinds of knife and gun reviewers. Before we buy anything, we always look and see what you have to say about it. So. Well, thank you very much. Of you know, course. it's from my perspective. I'm not the end-all expert. I always say that. Um, and I just roll it in and try to keep it real. You sure do. We really appreciate that, Thank too. you. You know, honestly, it's good people like you that keep me working my butt off, just like now. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. And I might as well mention, too, it's been great working for Arsenal. And it's been the most fun I've had working in Vegas. They're a great company. Good group of people, huh? Absolutely. Good group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and Nicole, uh, was. Uh, we were going to put her in front of the camera, but Walker stole it from her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, good to Nicole. Meet you. Mm -hmm. Excellent All right, thing. dude. Sorry. Okay. Here we are. Milled receiver. Milled receivers are right here. This is an RPK, um, which is the bipod long barrel version of the AK. Wow, look at that barrel on that not sucker. Nice, thicker barrel. Dude. Unfortunately, we're not going to have any of those in production. But the reason why I brought you over here <laughs> was so that you could look at this one. Um, My guys will still love seeing this stuff. Okay. Uh, that is a barrel and a half. Of course, like you said, RPK, there's a squad automatic weapon, non-interchangeable barrel, if I'm not mistaken, You're on RPK. Correct. Um, the RPK is a great weapon system as long as you uh, shoot within its uh, limitations and not smoke that barrel up. Okay, Walker, you were saying? The one beneath it, it, first of all, the reason why we have such a hard time making the milled receiver weapons is because we make them completely at our factory. Now, we do use Bulgarian barrels on it. Tell them which factory, milled, though. It's at the factory here in Las Vegas, okay. Arsenal Inc. And we mill the receivers at our factory. Because of our commitment to only putting new parts on, we can only build weapons that we have the parts for. If we're missing something as simple as a gas block, we're not going to build a weapon because we're not going to put a used part on it. And so we have to wait until we get a complete amount of parts. This would be my guess as to what our next production of milled receivers are. I'm not for sure on that. Once again, it boils down to what we have available. And that's just the CM7A1R, it's the synthetic stock version. The one I think everybody's been waiting for, which hopefully we'll have some of these come out, is the original SAM7 Classic. Good looking wood on that walker. Wow, this is the sad. original AK-47 here. It's got the 45 degree gas block, it's got the left hand threads. This is just a muzzle protector right here, it doesn't have the slant brake on it. But you can take that off, put on an original slant brake, and you're ready to go. Absolutely. Man, that's good wood. I love this. Look at the fit and finish on this, guys. Uh, and you're saying you're trying to bring this to market, not yet. Yeah, we have to wait until we get everything. You know, with the wood ones, one of the key components is making sure stuff matches. If you look at our under folder, yeah. pistol grip matches that. With this one, everything pretty much matches. It all looks nice and good. And that's one of the big components of putting together the wood stock ones. Okay, uh, now I personally think, and again, I'm not the uh, AK expert, I'm more of an AR guy, but I definitely respect the weapon system, its durability, and from what you're saying, accuracy of a well put together AK variant. Yes, um, as I said on this, I believe I told you on the stamped receivers, the accuracy out of the box is roughly around two inches at 100 yards. I've gotten calls from customers on the milled receiver guns that claim they're getting around one inch groups at 100 yards, and that's on a 7.62 by 39 caliber. Okay, again, from the bench, personally I'd have to see it to believe it, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. 
Now, I did see the reports at two inches on the stamped receiver, and so... I can see why, that being do doable. Well, the reason why I mentioned the one inch group is that the milled receiver is an inherently more accurate platform because there's less wobble in the receiver and the barrel when you shoot it. Okay, and I think that's why a lot of guys are very excited about Arsenal milled receivers and they want to see more of them for that exact reason. And also I think there's a perception um, that they're, they're more durable. What do you have to say about that? The durability, I get people who ask me that question a lot. My basic um, answer to that is that a milled receiver gun is going to last you three lifetimes. A stamped receiver gun will last you two lifetimes. You're never going to wear it out. <laughs> well said. Well said. Uh, I can tell you when guys see this, they're going to be very excited. They're going to see these come to market. Be patient with Arsenal. You can tell, you can see there's some supply issues that they're dealing with. It sounds like you're working on it as best you can. Yes, we to get are. It out. The, the stamped receivers we have in stock, ready to go, and the milled receivers is just our commitment to putting out the best quality product. We understand that you're paying a lot for these. Milled guns can run anywhere from fifteen hundred on up to three thousand dollars, depending on which variation we make. So, really? So the, that's what the prices will be on this? No, these are more along, that's a $1,500. This is probably more along a $1,700 or $1,800 gun. When you get into the NFA weapons class three, we've had them go anywhere from $3,000. I've, I've seen dealers selling them for $6,000. Dude, so. um, look at this bad boy down here. RPK variant, they're going to call it the SAR RPK-7. Right, you have plans to market this. Once again, we'll, we'll market it if we have all the materials to put it together. It's a very desirable piece. Dang right People it is. People love it. Um, Look at that barrel. Look at that barrel, man. Dude, that's going to be a heavy gun. I'm going to ballpark it about nine and a half or nine pounds. With bleed. Probably around a nine and a half, ten pound gun. I may annotate it. I may not. Let me see. Yeah, it's stout, but you'd expect that with that long, thick barrel, which is, you know, serving the um, squad automatic the saw roll, uh, squad automatic weapon roll. That's, those are good looking guns, dude. Good looking guns. What else you got? I noticed you you have some Sega stuff. Is that right? Yeah, the ones we first showed you, they are from Russia. Because they're from Russia, they have to be import marked as Sega. The the ones I'd like to show you now is the sure. Bulgarian side. Okay. These are from ours. These are imported as sporting rifles from Bulgaria. It's a 107F. And basically that is your standard 762 by 39 weapon. We did enhance it with the Midwest rails. You can get it with or without the rails. But the feature that really sells this weapon and sets it apart from any other AK is the side folding stock. If you look at this, you press the button here and it's gonna fold to the side. Get a nice compact weapon. I've had one for about three years that I've used as a demo weapon. And the thing that's unique about it, this stock will not move at all. It's like you're shooting a fixed stocked weapon, but it is a side folder. Why is it so hard for other manufacturers to get that? Because there's so many folders out there that do not lock up solid, that wiggle all over the place and lack that quality you're talking about. There's a couple of reasons. Number one is they don't have the technology. We work hand in hand with the factories. We have the proper technology to do it. The second thing is, is cost. It costs money to do something right. Other, a lot of people, they want to put out a product that quite frankly, I probably would have a hard time putting it on an airsoft weapon, much less a real weapon. <laughs> They put it out there, it's cheap, it breaks on people, it frustrates the shooters. That's the last thing we want to do for the shooters. They're paying good money for this, we want to make sure they get a quality product. So Arsenal and you guys are pretty serious about delivering that high quality, durable level of service. Absolutely. You know, if you're paying seven or eight hundred dollars for a weapon, you expect to get something that's high quality that's going to last. I couldn't agree more. I call it high value, you get a lot for your money. Uh, so, how thick is that stamp receiver, do you know? Offhand? That is the mil spec thickness of 1.0. Okay. And is this any different quality-wise in those Ishmash produced variants that we just saw? Um, both factories maintain a very high set of standards for their weapons. You know, to say one's better than the other, I couldn't tell you that one is necessarily better than the other. They're both using cold hammer forged barrels, they're chrome lined. And that's the reason why we work with those factories is because they both have such a high standard. Okay, that's a good answer. Good answer that they both are excellent.
I wouldn't expect anything more. This is a variant without the rail down there, is that correct? That's correct. A skeletonized so, folder? Yes, this is one of the original skeletonized folders. Some people like it just for the original look. Yep. It's a side folder again, just like the one above. And the one on the bottom is just the standard one with a standard upper and lower hand. And Walker, getting back to caliber, if you are a new a uh, potential purchaser of an AK variant, let's say Arsenal. You've decided on Arsenal, you want one. What would you recommend caliber-wise for a dude just getting into it? Would you go with a standard 7.62-49 or 5.45, what you know now? Um, well, I have people ask me that question, I say buy both. It's a hard question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is I mean, currently question. the 5.45 ammo is cheaper, but that supply source could be shut off any time and it could be go just as expensive. Yeah, if you look at just the pure economics of it, the 545 is cheaper to shoot, but most of the ammo coming in is surplus. I will say that Steve Hornaday has come out with a 545 hunting round, and so we're thinking that that will hopefully spur some of the bigger manufacturers to bring it in. Of course, you can get some 545 from the Brown Bear Silver Bear line, which is what we use to exclusively test our rifles. That's actually fairly good stuff for its it is price, isn't it? Excellent ammunition. I found that it's very clean and um, we, we exclusively use our ammo. People who've been buying our products for the past year, they'll probably notice that every one of our rifles comes with a test target. And that's something that nobody else, quite frankly, has the guts to do. That's because if you issued a test target with it, you probably have to do a three foot by five foot poster. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we do ours on a standard target. Uh, you know, I couldn't agree more. I think every gun sold should have a test target because it is a boat of confidence to the consumer that, dude, we have tested this gun. We're putting a we're putting our mark of approval on this very gun that you have just bought that it's going to shoot good for you. Absolutely. I love it. What do you have over here, Walker? This is an, an amazing piece. This is a project we've been working on for many years. And Look at that. It has come to fruition. We, we completed everything in 2009. We're showcasing here at the 2010 SHOT Show. Let me see if I can go down like this, guys. That way you won't have as many reflections. There you go. Okay. What you see there is it celebrates the 35th anniversary of the AK-74. It's a 545. And it celebrates the 90th birthday of Mikhail Kalashnikov. I don't know course, if you can hear him. Let me come back here. Yeah. The engraving that you see on there is done in gold, but the actual parts, that is a titanium nitrite coating, which is the same uh, coating that they put on tools. Here, that talk just, on top of here so they can hear. That way I can get a good view of it too. Okay. The titanium nitrite coating coincides with the authenticity of the AK and that it's the world's most durable weapon. It comes complete in the leather case like you see there. That particular weapon, there is only 100 of them made. Wow. And the certificate of authenticity is signed by General Kalashnikov himself. Wow, I am uh, very, very impressed with that piece. Wow, only 100 made. Yes. I don't even want to ask the cost. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Well, we don't mind telling. The cost on it is about $5,000. Okay. And uh, I would imagine you're probably going to sell out of those. Yes. What we're doing is reserving serial numbers. These are going to the collectors in the industry. And um, it's a tribute to a man who spent his lifetime developing weapon systems. As most of the fans of the AK know, Mikhail Kalashnikov was friends with people like Bill Ruger, Eugene Stoner. And it's that kinship of yep. designers. That exactly. Together. Yeah, and uh, highly respected. And like you said, it is a club of these, uh, and they're just uh, into the gun designing business, and they respect each other's work. And he's probably the last one around. You know, as everyone knows, Eugene Stoner's passed away, Bill Ruger's yep. passed away, and Mikhail Kalashnikov is the last one left. This will probably be the last one of these that you'll ever see where he actually signs a certificate of authenticity. Maybe. To my knowledge, it's the only one ever in the United States. Wow. Uh, maybe we'll have some future gun designers watching this video. And we need some, don't we? Some new it, blood to that level. Absolutely. I hope it inspires a new generation. Exactly. Uh, and I think there's a lot more cool designs that have yet to be made. Excellent. If you look over here, here's a, this is an original certificate of authenticity that has a signature on it. Excellent. Who's your calendar signer over there? That's Kathy Rankin. She's a spokesperson for the New England Warrior. It's a charity, and which goes, the proceeds are going to benefit the Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. I believe that's what the New England Warrior is working for. She has a calendar that she signed. She's put a lot of energy and effort into it. She's gone around, seen the troops, talked to them. Awesome. Uh, seen the sacrifices that they're making. 
conferences. Excellent. I didn't know if it was one of your spokespeople. No. Excellent. Anything else you want to talk about, Walker? Uh, briefly mention the silver edition on the back side. Oh, look at that. It's the same as the gold, except the certificate of authenticity. The certificate of authenticity that was signed is a facsimile signature on this. The silver parts you see on there are a hard chrome finish. It's not silver. So these weapons are fully capable of functioning. Most likely will never be shot. It uh, comes in the case like you see it. And the price tag on that one is about $3,500. And there's 400 of those available. Okay, cool. So you went down to, a, like you said, a little bit of changes in the quality level. Still outstanding. A lot less money. One of the interesting things is that on the gold one, serial number 501, if you go over to the NRA booth, it's there, and after it leaves the SHOT Show, it'll go to the NRA Museum. Serial number 502 was left in Russia, and it's kept by the Kalashnikov Foundation, and the Kalashnikov Foundation will be taking it to different museums throughout Russia. Wow. We also, in the production of this, we donated a sizable amount to the Kalashnikov Foundation and to the NRA. So you are big supporters of the NRA? Absolutely. The NRA is out there. They're fighting nice. for our rights. Dang right they um, are. And just to let people know, the Kalashnikov Foundation is a Russian-based foundation that goes to support people who fought in what they call the Great Patriotic War, but it's also World War II. And as most people know, the Russians were our allies in that war fighting against Nazi Germany. Correct. That's why we support it. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Uh, hey, accessories, you have some in your case over here? Yeah. I wouldn't mind just panning that really briefly so guys can know what's available from you guys for your guns. Excuse sure. me, fellas. Sorry, guys. Looks like there's that uh, the optics mount you were talking about, Walker. Yeah, that's a well, that's a mount that if you're building a gun, you're going to want to use this scope rail. If you already have the gun built and you have the rail on it, oh, look at that bayonet, dude. We got to check that too. This is the optic mount that we make ourselves. It's got the Picatinny rail on top. Not too heavy. I like it. I really like that, actually. And that clips right into the AK mount, right? Yes. Look at that. Just like Walker's talking about, they have a placard. Every booth in the SHOT Show should have this. Every booth should be pushing NRA. Like I said in my other reviews, all these would become illegal and unimportable overnight if it were not for the NRA defending it. Okay, the bayonet. This is an original Bulgarian bayonet. Look at that. I love that. Brand new. Cost? Cost on that, I believe, is around, I'm guessing around $30 or $40. That's it? I don't know exactly what to do. Dude, I like that. I like the length of it. It's not too short. It's not too heavy. It's got a good handle material. You get, see you have a wire cutting feature in there, a la M9 bayonet and some others. Dig it. One of the things I want to show you is a brand new product we came out with. And this is your elevation tool for any AK. Wow. What we've done, and this is all steel construction, so when you adjust your front sight tip, it's not going to break on you whatsoever. And we've given an instruction manual that's going to tell you how to use it for any different type of AK you have. Whether you've got an SBR, whether you've got a Wasser, any different type of AK. It also works on SKSs, RPKs, PKMs, and we give a complete instruction manual for that. Excellent. Uh, if anybody sees these and they want to buy it, where do they go? They can always go to the KVAR website, KVAR sells um, almost every part and accessory that Arsenal makes. It's www.k-var.com. K-var.com, and they can see it. And you might have a dealer network with all this stuff too? Yes. Visit your local dealers. If they don't stock our product, ask for this stuff. You got a parts kit down there. It looks like a receiver kit. Is that, uh, that's got to be U.S. made parts in there, right? These parts, variation you get as to whether or not they're U.S. made. We've got different parts in here that uh, some of them contain U.S. parts in them, some of them don't. Uh -huh. It's all very detailed as to, this one does not. It's a three-shot burst repair kit. Okay, so it just depends on the kit you're getting. Yeah, we do have some U.S. Pritchard. Look at these. I really dig that elevation wrench. If I was an AK owner, this would be a must-buy item right here. The other thing that every AK guy should have in their toolbox is our spring kit. That retails, I think, for roughly around 30 bucks. 
And that's an AK spring kit. It's going to work on just about any AK. Comes with a firing pin. Super quality springs, you're saying? Yes. Anything else, parts-wise? I think we hit it. Got the magazines, of course. We'll end with that. Last is the magazines. Those are original Arsenal Bulgaria double circle tins. They come steel reinforced in the front and the back, and they have a steel liner going all the way down on the inside, around the feed lips, and at the bottom. Retails for $27. You can't get a better magazine. And I will tell you this, TM Piers, this is not too heavy. Another big bonus. Uh, a lot of those AK mags are bulletproof, but man, they're heavy. They're yeah. like eight ounces empty. Well, the thing Crazy. you have to watch out for is the U.S. made polymer ones. Yeah. There's people out there knocking off this waffle pattern. Okay. The issue with that is they're not steel reinforced. When you put them in the weapon, if you drop the weapon, anything happens to it, it's going to break. And we don't even warranty our weapons when you're using non-factory magazines. Now what I mean by that, of course, the Arsenal factory or if you have the steel surplus magazine. We'll warranty it for that. But if you use something that's out of mill spec, such as one of the US made polymer ones, we will not warranty it. Dude, nicely said. You know what, after talking to Walker here, here's my fat face again. I wanna buy an AK. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Because the level of quality that I'm seeing and feeling here, uh, seeing firsthand actually, it's impressive. And I think, Walker, you're making some good points that are validated through experience on the quality levels. And TM Peers, if you're wondering which AK I would buy out of all these, I'll show you. Here we go, walking over. This one right here, sorry guys. That's the one I'd buy right there. SGL 21-72, that plum colored furniture. Outstanding. Sorry about that. Cool. How, what do you think of my choice? Is that a good AK to buy? I think you've chosen an excellent one. That's the Russian with the chrome line barrel. Uh, it's excellent quality. Yeah, I, of course I'm not buying it now. I'm saying in a perfect world I would get it, and I would get pretty much every accessory you just threw on that table. I would, you, the springs are already in there because it's an arsenal gun, but I would get the, I like those magazines. I'd probably go with those. I like the steel line option. Definitely go with the bayonet. Definitely. <laughs> you gotta have that. And all the other stuff, the sight tool as well. You gotta accessorize. That's the bottom line. That's you right. Know, the, the wives, they accessorize with their stuff. <laughs> we gotta be able to accessorize. I'm out of time, Walker. My SD card is filling up. You did an outstanding job of representing Arsenal, giving us some really good information, and hosting me, Nothing Fancy, and all my thousands of viewers. Thank you very much. Thank you for stopping by. All right. Arsenal 2010 SHOT Show. This is Nothing Fancy. Signing off, tune into my other SHOT Show segments for detailed analysis of cool weaponry, gear, knives, and really nice people that sell it. Ow.